All right, so to talk about uh, experiment with scalar and vector quantities, we're going to talk about position, distance, and displacement. Position, distance, and displacement. Now, all of these have to do with distance traveled. We're talking about meters, kilometers, something like that, where we're expressing uh, uh, a measurement of um, distance away from something. So that's what we're going to start off talking about. Now, to start this off, we need to define the difference between these guys. So bear with me, this will make sense in just a second. We're going to talk about all three of these types. So let's start off by talking about distance. Now, distance is defined as the length between, or the length of the path between two points. So let's go back to my commute example. The distance that I travel from my house here to Cochrane High School is this path here where I drive along the road. The total distance of this is 33 kilometers. Now, we're not interested in the direction in which I'm going because distance is a scalar quantity. It is magnitude only. It does not include direction. So this distance that I travel is 33 kilometers. We write this and the symbol for this is a lowercase d. Ooh, let's make that a little bit brighter so we can see it. Is a lowercase d. So in this case, the distance that I traveled was 33 kilometers. Now, I'm going to skip displacement. We'll come back to displacement in a second. We're going to talk about position. Now, position is a vector quantity. And uh, the position is the distance between a point and a reference point. So if we were to draw this as a grid, here's my y-axis and my x-axis. This point here I'm going to call 0, 0. And let's just say I had a point up here and that point was 5, 5, roughly like that. My position is where I sit on this grid. Now, this point here, 5, 5, let's zoom in on this guy here. This point here, 5, 5, is my position. This is in reference to my starting point. So I went five of whatever it was, let's call it meters, five meters this way, five meters this way. Now this is a vector quantity. And so what this would need to have is this would need to have a di direction. Now for the sake of this, we are going to call this a positive five and a positive five. The positive is going to give us our direction. This will make more sense in a second. Now the displacement, when we talk about displacement, oh, I should mention, we talk about position with a lowercase d with a little arrow on top. This little arrow on top indicates that this is a vector quantity, okay? It has magnitude and a direction. We tell the direction here with these particular coordinates, all right? Now, displacement is a straight line from one point to another. So if I drew in red here the displacement between my reference point, that's a bad line, between my reference point and the point that I drew on here, this is the displacement. This is the straight line from one point to another. So if we go back to my original example here, this line here that takes me from Cochrane to my house, this is the displacement between my house and Cochrane. So uh, we write that as delta d with a little bit, with the little arrow on top. This shows us that this is a vector quantity because it needs direction and magnitude. Uh, and it shows me, it says this is the change in position. So to change from 0, 0 up to 5, 5 or from my house to Cochrane, it needs, uh, that's the, that's the uh, displacement that I've undergone. Now. We said that that line was roughly 25 kilometers. So I would write 25 kilometers to get from my house to Cochrane High School as the bird flies, as a straight line. But we need to have a direction attached to this as well. So we would say 25 kilometers northwest. There's a bunch of ways that we can indicate direction. And we are going to talk about that with these problems that we're going to do. So I want to show you one more example really quick. Here is a map from Edmonton to Peace River, Alberta. All right, here's Edmonton here, and here's Peace River all the way up here. Now, if we were to talk about the distance, scalar quantity, so which means only magnitude, the distance between 
Edmonton and Peace River, we would say that that is this red line that we would travel all the way here. This is a scalar quantity. We're not interested in the direction, just the magnitude. So let's just call this 200 kilometers to drive the road all the way there. But if we look at the displacement, which is a vector quantity, we would say from Edmonton to Peace River is just this black line here. And we could say, let's just estimate it, and let's just say that's 100 kilometers. But we'd also have to include the direction. So we could say 100 kilometers northwest, roughly. Now, obviously, this is like I made up those numbers here, but you kind of get the picture. So let's look at the example of a question that you might be asked to solve. So here's what it says. It says, find the displacement vector displacement vector, so let's just highlight that because we're just trying to be aware of what it's asking us. So displacement is the change in position from position A and position B. If from position A to position B, so this is our first stop is position A and position B is our second stop. So position A to position B, if position A is 3.5 centimeters positive, and position B is positive 5.7. So let's do this first. I've got a number line here. Let's plot these two things on a number line. So 3.5 puts us right about here, and this is position A, all right? And then 5.7 puts us roughly here, and we're gonna call this position B. Now, the reason that this is a vector quantity is because of these two signs right here. These two t signs both tell us the direction in which this is heading. So we are going from position A to position B. We're going from left to right. So we need to figure out what the displacement vector between those two points is. So what we're going to use is we're going to use these formulas. Now, let me get rid of these little notes here. So the first formula word that we're going to use is this guy right here. All right, this is our change in position or our displacement formula. And what this says is that our displacement, our change in position is equal to the final position. That's what this two means. This we, the other way we write this is position final minus this guy here is the position initial. So the first position or the last position that we end up at minus the first position. So let's go, let's rewrite that here on our sheet. So we would write that our change in position, and this is a vector quantity, so we need to have that little arrow on top. So our change in position is equal to our position, and we are gonna go our final position, which I'm just gonna write in as position B because we're moving from A to B. So position B minus position A, our final position minus our initial position. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna substitute in our values, but we're gonna make sure to put in our direction. So our final position is a positive 5.7 centimeters. Our initial position is three, uh, positive, excuse me, is a positive, 3.5 centimeters. So we're gonna plug that into our calculator. Positive 3.5, or positive 5.7, minus a positive 3.5. And that gives us 2.2, .2, a positive 2.2 .2 centimeters. What that's saying is that in a positive direction, which is going this direction, that's positive, in a positive direction, we are moving in our movement from position A to position B, we're moving a positive 2.2 centimeters. Now we check our significant digits. So this is two significant digits. This is two significant digits. And so this can be two significant digits. So here's our final answer, a positive 2.2 centimeters. So you must include the direction, which in this case is positive, and the appropriate number of significant digits. So hopefully that makes sense for question number one. Let's check out question number two here. All right, this adds a little bit of a twist on it. So this question says find the displacement vector 
All right, so that's what we're looking for here, our displacement vector from position x, that's our first position. So we could write, you could write as a note above it, initial position to position y. Here's our final position. Uh, if the position x is 6.9 meters east and position y is 8.2 meters west. Now, instead of positive and negative, we've now given a direction of east and west. So let's set this up here. We're gonna set up my thing. So this here is west and this side here with the blue is east. So let's plot these guys on a graph. I'm going to use black here over top of the red and blue thing. So our position X is 6.9 meters east. So that puts me right about here. So this is position with my little arrow on top, position X, all right? And uh, my second position, my position Y is 8.2. So that puts me somewhere right here and that is position why? All right. And so what we know is that we are going from position X to position Y. So we are traveling this way. So we're going to use our same formula here. Our change in position is equal to our position final or D2 minus position one or our initial position. So let's plug in our values here. We're going dx, or sorry, dy is our final position. dy with the little arrow on top minus dx with the little arrow on top. And so let's plug in our values here. dy is, I'm going to put in a negative 8.2 because that is, I went to the left in a negative direction. All right. Uh, minus, and that's in meters minus, and we went uh, 6.9 west. This was 6 point, ooh, minus 6.9 meters. Now that's positive because we were in the positive direction. So this way here was positive, this way here was negative. So we assigned positive and negative to the two directions. You could have flipped them around completely and you would still come up with the same answer. So. We are gonna do this on our calculator. We are gonna take a negative 8.2 and we are gonna subtract a positive 6.9 and that gives us a negative 15.1 meters. Now, I need to express this to the proper significant digits. So uh, this has two significant digits, this has two significant digits, so my final answer here needs to have two significant digits, so I'm gonna write that, rounding down, as 15 meters. There is my final answer there. Now, does this make sense? Oh, sorry, a negative 15, all right? So that makes sense. We're going from position X here, we're going this way, so we're going in a negative direction, and so we end up with negative 15 meters. So I hopefully this makes sense to you. Um, I've got one more example that I think might be worthwhile showing you. So give me one second and we'll show you that. All right, so let's do one more quick example here. So this is our part C. So Alonzo walks 0 0.64 kilometers north and then walks 7.6 kilometers south. What was his total displacement? Now, this is one other way to look for it. If it asks here for total displacement, then we need one more formula here. So let's go back and look at our formula sheet. So here's our formula. The total displacement is the change in position one plus the change in position two plus the change in position three and so on and so forth. So let's take that over here and let's write it in. So. Alonzo, our formula that we're gonna use is our change in position total, so that's our total displacement, is equal to our change in position one plus our change in position two and so on and so on and so forth. So let's draw this out to see what's happening and we'll draw it up and down to simulate our, our um, north and south. So Alonzo, let's just say, is gonna start here. He is gonna walk 
6 0.64 kilometers to the north. This is 0 0.64 kilometers. Notice this is our displacement. Here's our starting point here, and here's our ending point here. He walks 6.4 kilometers. This is our first displacement, all right? Now, Alonso turns around and walks 1.6 kilometers, so past the original point south. This is probably a really poor drawing as far as like the scale of it, but we'll call this 1 point, or 1.76 kilometers south. Notice he started here, he started at this point right here, and he moved down south this way. So he's actually going now from our original direction in a negative direction. So if we take our formula, we say that our displacement one was a positive 0 0.64 kilometers plus, now he went in a negative direction, negative 1.76 kilometers. We punch that into our calculator. So positive 0 0.64 plus a negative 1.76 and that gives us a net thing of negative 1.12 kilometers. We check our significant digits. We know we've got to get it down to two significant digits because there's two here and three here. So we got to get it down to two significant digits. So we write that as a negative 1.1 kilometers. That's our approximate uh, kilometers. And we could leave it like this. This would probably be okay, but somewhere we would have had to indicate that north is positive and south is negative. Now, because we hadn't indicated that before, what I would say is I would say his total displacement, the little arrow, was 1.1 kilometers ooh, south. All right, that's how I would write that. And so uh, now we've talked about displacement and the change in displacement and total displacement. So in your assignment, you are gonna get a bunch of opportunities to practice this, all right? So I would start with this before moving on to our speed versus velocity.